Good hey. evening. Good evening. This is Academy of Tone number 89. Okay. And oh, I'm already exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> burn. Okay, burn. Yeah, last minute we got Marco Vried here because you are North German. Yes. And today we are actually here in Hamburg, North Germany. Yeah. Um, it's a big, big pleasure to have you here. Thanks As for a, having me. Thanks yeah, so and uh, it's a, another big, big pleasure to be here at the number one guitar center. And we are surrounded by beautiful guitars. Definitely. And some of and them... expensive guitars. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, tomorrow I will shoot um, a series of, well, vintage guitars. It's called The World of Vintage Guitars, um, demonstrating all kinds of guitars, archtops, strats, Les Pauls, uh, 335s, 345s, uh, a bunch of guitars, amazing guitars. Yeah. And for me, it's always kind of a blind date. I come here and they bring the best of the best. Yeah, it is, it is quite <laughs> scary, actually. There's one special guitar. Yeah. Um, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a big surprise, yeah. you know? but it's, uh, yeah, it is, it is unbelievable. Yeah. unbelievable guitar. So, you know, that's, that's a, a, a huge thing here. Maybe we can show you guys first how the store actually looks like. Yeah. Um, earlier this afternoon, or I mean, actually like an hour before we go live, like now, uh, we shot a little clip Check out how it looks when you come into the number one guitar center in Hamburg. What a store, no? What a store. Um, these days, it's great to have stores like that, where you actually can go and physically, you know, check out instruments and make noise and annoy people <laughs> in the store. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I think it's very important for the yeah. community as well. Uh, yeah. Very important. You know, people yeah. come here together and talk and it's, it's, um, it's a point where to meet, where to check out new stuff, where to trade knowledge, uh, you know, find, make new friends and whatever, you know. Um, and this store for me is, is a good example of um, how to make um, a store that is worth visiting. Mm. Um, 
these days with online, yeah. I know it's hard because um, you have to invest tons of money into the inventory. Yeah. You have seen how many guitars oh. uh, in the video? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, many, many. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of also interesting to talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. Absolutely, absolutely. let's do it. And um, do it. yeah, since Marco is here as a guest, um, yeah, maybe it's it's great to know what you have done in the past and what's your kind of industry insight. Insight. Yeah. M yeah. Maybe first we start with the music side. So. Yeah. You became the new guitar player of Pink Cream 69? Yeah, one month before Corona started. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about timing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I remember that very well. Yeah, I got the call when I was at NAM. NAM and uh, the NAM 2020. show. In 2020. I was there too. I, of course, we, yeah. we met there as yeah. well. And I, I uh, remember precisely when I uh, entered the plane, I got a text message by Nicholas Crofter, the, the manager of, of Pink Cream uh, yeah. 69. And he said, well, um, the guys want you in the band. Uh, um, uh, Uwe right now, he wants to leave the band and, and we want you to, to be the new guitar player in the band. So there was no audition or whatever because I knew the guys for, anyway. for, for years. And yeah. uh, I al already uh, played some shows with them 10 years ago. Like a uh, sub? Uh, yeah, be because uh, um, uh, um, for private reasons, I played for like four shows for, like, yeah, as a sub. Uh, on a tour in 2011 and um, here just just yeah. one, one little uh, comment here it's always good to be a sub in yeah. my career all the good things started when I was a sub first it's like you know somebody was recommending me into a new band you meet new friends you meet new musicians and then maybe you know the original guitar player kind of moves on to yeah. some some other bands making bigger projects this hap this happened to me like three four times yeah and so if you have an offer to sub for somebody my recommendation is go for it it is never it's always a hard job because you have to learn the whole repertoire Mo mostly it's kind of new songs that you probably don't it's true. know it's true. but but th this is such a big investment into your network and for me I wouldn't be here and I would never achieve the stuff that I have achieved if I wouldn't have subbed for people. Yeah. And by the way, um, next Sunday after this, um, I have a visit from Ali Neander, <laughs> who Rodger Monotones, uh, Erbarmen, die Hesse kommen for the Germans. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Um, and, and, you know, he's, he's one of those uh, guys from Frankfurt area. And I, I subbed for him and that, brought me into another band, Edu Zanki, and that brought me into Purple yeah, Shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. So, sorry for... No, no, no it, it's all good. So that happened two years ago, right you know, before I boarded the plane to LA. And I said, yes, definitely always loved the band, loved the songs, loved the singer, David Reedman. Great, great singer. And there's also another connection. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, Jen. Hi, Who is Georg. That? Jen, Ms. Jen Majura is there. Ah, Jen, hi. And uh, Mr. Georg Meyer from Saarbrücken. Yeah, okay, Georgie. Georgie, Georgie Porgy. Georgie yeah. Porgy, there it is. Yeah. And um, so this happened like, yeah, you know how it was. Yeah. Uh, directly before Corona changed everything. Yeah. And I will never forget when I went back to Germany and uh, um, after the NAMM show, and I was at LAX at the airport in LA, yeah. and there were like the first news, CNN news, there's like a, something COVID. going on in China, whatever. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. And then, yeah, we know the rest is history. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the one, one thing about um, Pink Cream 69 and David Reedman, there's another connection because David Reedman is also the singer that I recorded two Blue Place Hendrix and of course, uh, live shows or DVDs out there. Maybe have a little clip so you know the guy we're talking about, who is the original singer of uh, Pink Cream 69 Forever. He left the UK because of that band. Absolutely. So, and, you know, check out David Reedman uh, with my Blue Place Hendrix clip. Said a joke or two a deep 
Yeah, so this was David well Reedman. Yeah. Nice tone, by the way. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Very good. By the way, this concert, I played the prototype of the M1, oh, really? which, when you look very closely on the video, you see an old Marshall and a big plastic, a big white plastic box on top of it. And that was the vintage oh, really? channel oh, of the M1. Still in the old school components, like the big resistors and capacitors. Yeah. So, like, a normal chassis style and uh, yeah but this was already nice sound yeah but it's in your fingers anyway well you know yeah it's always in the fingers yeah. <laughs> forget about the gear but hey um, we have um, Jen Matura here um, just um, yeah, an old old friend of that doesn't mean she's old we're in the same age so that means <laughs> I'm old as well but old you know we go way back yeah way back. I, I, I know her also from trade shows and we played yeah. at Guitar Summit and now she's in the US. Uh, do you know anything more about that? Well, she is on tour there uh, with Evanescence still. They, yeah. I think she's doing, they're, they're on tour there or uh, some, some shows are left, I think almost done. I'm not sure, but yeah. uh, it seems that she's still in California, so. Yeah. Dominic Lewis, greetings from Remscheid, darling. Ah, okay, Remscheid, this is the place where you have <laughs> been living for a while. Many, many, many years, yeah. yeah. Uh, five. Five minutes from that store, the Engel showroom, great, great Engel showroom in, in uh, um, Remscheid, uh, uh, West Germany. So, uh, yeah, one of my dearest friends, Dominic Lewis, and yeah. he has a great store, great, another great uh, guitar store. Absolutely. Store. And I did a clinic in that store, uh, I think, December-ish, before Christmas, from what I remember. So, Dominic... Uh, Hallo in Nordrhein-Westfalen. <laughs> Celine, bonjour, Celine, my, my student from Belgium. Uh, okay. She, she lives in Hamburg uh, uh, now as well. Um, all right, Jen. Well, Jen, hugs and kisses from, from Hamburg. Be safe yeah. and hope to, to have a coffee with you very soon. Yeah. Ah, she's playing five more shows, um, then home after three and a half months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You will be jet lagged. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> have some coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you kind of escaped some part of the winter, which is, is nice. Definitely. And we don't do it because uh, yeah, NEM show is postponed and we exactly. have no reason to go to sunny California. Definitely, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah anyway, but back to Remscheid. Yeah. If we talk a little bit about you and your career, um, you're originally from even further up the north. Yeah, the real north, as we say. The echte Norden. The echte Norden. Yeah, uh, yeah. Schleswig-Holstein, uh, close to Denmark. Yeah. You know, in the middle of Schleswig-Holstein, and and we moved to, with the family to uh, to Ramscheid when I was like seven or eight years old. Ah, okay. Because my mom is from there. Ah, okay. My, my dad is from the north. Right. So I I um, I um, yeah spent many many years there. Yeah. And uh, five minutes from that store, which yeah. is a great coincidence. And so, so you're, you're also familiar with the mentality <laughs> in, in, in the Ruhrgebiet, Nordrhein-Westfalen. Yeah, it's actually the Bergisch Land. It's yeah. not part of the Ruhr area. Ah, okay. It's between the, the Rhine area yeah. and the Ruhr area. So it's Bergisch Land. Okay. It's w uh, Wuppertal, Wuppertal, Soling and Remscheid. Yeah. So this is Bergisch what, what I, I, well, I, I Just know. to be correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. For, for, <laughs> me, for me, when I was younger, when I got in contact with people from this industri industrial yeah, area, yeah, yeah, it is true. you know, especially from the Ruhrgebiet, this yeah. was my first. Yeah. I, I met people that were kind of having used very rough words, you know. Same here. That was, at first, it was very... Shocking. It, it, it was, it was, yeah. definitely. But those people are actually very warm-hearted. They just use, yeah. you know, tough words. Uh, hey, Blugi, du alte Presswurst, mach mal lauter, ich schwör ihr keinen Scheiß. Ja, ja, ja. Many, many stories, many stories. Yeah. Hör mal. Ja, hör mal. Spielst hör mal. du gern Gitarre? Warum lernst du es dann nicht? <lacht> genau. Was, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the English speaking yeah. community. Well, I, I tried to decide, listen, yeah. hey, do you like to play the guitar? Yeah. Why don't you learn yeah, it? Yeah, why don't you learn it? This is very, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a super... Um, 
offensive way, <laughs> yeah. but it's 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 so clever offensive that it's actually yeah. nice. It's funny, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. But at first, yeah. it is very okay. What? Why? You know? Yeah, yeah. What is, it is what it is. If okay. You have to adjust to this yeah. kind of tone. Yeah, definitely. They have a rougher, yeah, a rougher def tone. Definitely. Um, talking about you know tone and stuff, you had a lot of other projects in the past as well. I I just checked here. Wait a minute. Let me read this. Um, you turned to be a professional musician at the age of 19. Yeah. Okay. Me kind of 50, 55 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I always tell people it was last century. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> and keep it open. Okay, that's that's also cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, Jeff Scott Soto, this was kind of your first big thing? Well, yeah, we, we uh, did a tour with Jeff, Jeff uh, Scott Soto with, uh, with my band called Time Back Then. So we were the open act and there were some moments when Jeff brought me on stage and I played some songs with him, which is, cool. which is very cool. And uh, that was my first real tour when I was 19, 20. Yeah, that was the first moment when you, you know, you had bad food, you know, at 3 a.m. at a gas station of and stuff course. like that. We um, all we all have to, to do this life once in a while because absolutely. it tells you how much passion you need to have for the music. <laughs> yeah. um, That's the best test. Yeah. If you if you are if you enjoy being alone or with five guys with stinky socks. Yeah. You know, and the bass player you know, they have the, the worst, you know, the worst <laughs> socks on tour. <laughs> and uh, and you enjoy being with them. A, with them at a gas station at 3 a.m., yeah. then you can tour. You can tour. You yeah. are able to, to make it in the industry. Yeah. You and can, I'm serious. No, no, it, yeah. it, it is true. You know, you, the, the, the personal side of the whole industry is just as important as your playing. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, you have to you know your shit on the one side, but on the other hand, it's like once you know that shit, it's all about psychology is the band working is the band breaking up and that's so important because, i mean i go through your history and then i can already see this this project and that, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is maybe psychology maybe it was oh, great and sure um so sure. Ne next thing you've done was a female singer yeah um what, what's going that's, on with that's her? a nice story for the upcoming musicians especially daisy shane so she was she was a surf a two-time surf <clears throat> world championship ah. uh, um yeah, champion in surfing in California, and the guitar player talking about being, you know, at the at the right time uh, um, in that particular moment. The guitar player of Jeff Scott Soto, Howie Simon, he always watched me playing when we were opening for them, huh. and he suggested my name in California See. to Ken Templin. Yeah, and he said if you need a hired gun or some some session musician in Europe. He's the guy. Exactly. Thanks again, Howie. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got a call uh, when I was 21. Mm -hmm. Perfect age for that. And mm -hmm. that was my second tour with that pop rockish singer from California. She, uh, she just did one record. We did one tour in, in the Netherlands, in Switzerland, and Austria. And um, the, the album didn't sell that well. And then she wanted to become a mom. And she married. And then... That was it. Yeah. That was over. Oh, well, this is how life goes. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, you have to make your decisions in life. What is your first priority? Sure. And it's fair enough to try a career. And if it doesn't work out, hey, this is your life. Absolutely. And, and don't do things that you don't like. Absolutely. And uh, being a musician... Um, you, must be, you must be crazy in a good way. Yeah. You must be totally excessive in, in, your, in your thoughts, in your acting. And, and yeah, you need to be crazy in a good way. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. crazy. Um, she is called Daisy Chain. Daisy Chain. Daisy Daisy Ch that was not her, her, her original name. Ah. That was her original was Sarah. I don't know Sarah, Sarah something. Sarah something. But <laughs> some producer said, I think that's a great name, Daisy Chain. I li I like that one. I said, well, okay. I, you know, I, for me as a technician, Daisy Chain means like I can chain I know, all I know, the fa effect pedals with the DC. Uh, there are so many questions. Okay. Ah. Well, first of all, is okay. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hi, Marco. How did you get into the PRS guitar? We come to that, that this, later. This we later. Another question for the both of you. What are the most important things when it comes to defining tone? Well, um, for me personally, it's 
it's it's a cliche, and we talked about that, uh, dear lady, uh, a couple of years <laughs> ago. I remember that. Yeah. It is really like <clears throat> the mixture of vibrato, your fingerprints, your um, the, you, what it what it really is in your fingers, and what you hear. That you are able to play what you hear inside, and that you can get that across. It's not the sound of the amp. No. It's just it's it's your personality what's inside of you you can uh, transpose on the fretboard yeah and this is something many people don't get they say well i need which is great for the industry i need that amp and i need that effect pedal and fair enough it's all good we yeah. all love gear yeah but it's it's definitely here and here what makes it sound unique and you i guess yeah so i have a similar way to express it uh, jen for me the, the, the tone, uh, if you have like a vision of a tone, and I think mm -hmm. of maybe an opera singer, you know, mm -hmm. like, rrr. so the first thing is a tone for me can be subtle, can be strong, can be loud, can be screaming, but I have a vision before yeah. I start. The vision doesn't yeah. mean um, it's more a feeling. It's, it's, it's an atmosphere. Before I do something, I, I can tell you... <laughs> For me, there were a few things that had a good tone or aggressive tone or, you know, a, a whispery tone. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, which is the same thing, it's your voice. Yeah. And you have to, 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 to cr create a feeling for your voice. And this is like a great singer. If you listen to like Journey, oh. you know, this guy, he knows... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a there. bel canto. Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. there's different styles and yeah, different yeah, yeah. visions of tones. Yeah. But for me, somebody you know that it's sings such a beautiful note. Exactly, it's the texture, it's the yeah. the smell. I mean, of yeah. course, it's, yeah. it's not, but it's it's the extra thing. Be right besides the right note, the right timing, the right pitch. It is how you deal with pitch. I mean, like my hero Jeff Beck, oh. he 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 kind of bends notes out of tune. And he, he does it purposely, and it's like a a strange old cheese for some people, mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's so tasty. It's like if you are into old cheese, and then it's like, I man, like this guy has the extra note here. My old guitar teacher yeah. uh, said something to me I will never forget when I was like 14. It's a very crucial age when you you know play guitar and play for like three or four years. Um, Hello, Marco. Well, we will uh, answer your questions a little bit later. Yeah. Um, he's, he said to me, okay, play, play this um, melody. And it was something like that. I, I can't really remember, like 100%. Some very aor melodic, rockish, yeah. new show. And, yeah. and I played it like that back in the day. Um, and he said, well... Um, yeah, those were the right notes. Those were the right notes, but now put some meaning yeah. in it. I said, what? And I said, well, I, I played the right notes. It was like... There is no, there is yeah. no substance in there. There See, is no... Okay.
this micro bend here can mean so much. Oh. It, it, it's like, yeah. you know, know it, it's like, I know, I know. And, uh, sing the lead of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, in German, it's uh, sing mir das Lied vom Tod. <laughs> sing the, the, the song of death. There's a, 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 a Western. A, that sounds like a Man of War song. <laughs> sing me the song of death. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the, I know exactly what you mean. So this, the, 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 those micro bands, the yeah. smear bands. Yeah. Um, back in the day, I played like that, you know. And, and it sounded, of course, like a wrong note. But you need to feel. It. It's like, it's, you know, I loved, also always loved that you know uh, that playing by Marty Friedman, and he uh, he's not playing like. Kind of, you know, and Jeff Beck, did yeah, some you know similar thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's tone. Tone is everything. It's your voice. It's your personality, and you project on the fretboard. Right. Okay. Let's go into your v, um, CV. Just now that little jam right there makes my day, gentlemen. Well, that's that's very nice. Okay. That's very thank you. Very and nice. it's all spontaneous. You know, we had no plan. No, that of this. was that was yeah. That you was... you came up with a melody, and then you played the chords, and I con continued. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, same here. Okay, um, <clears throat> 2007 to 2015 you played with Axis. Yeah, that really changed my life back in the day. That was like the, that changed everything basically. Until then, you know, I did, you know, three weeks here, but it was not... The, Steady. The, it, was, it was still not professionally. That was, that was more like semi-professional. Uh, I had to do some jobs on the side, you know, working in a guitar store back in the day. And this is how I got the job, actually. Many people still think, <laughs> many people still think that somebody wrote me an email from Access and said, you know, uh, we saw you on back in the day. That makes me very old. MySpace. Uh, <laughs> I have um, MySpace and said, well, we saw that picture of you and you, you, how you played, whatever. Uh, we want you in the band. No, it was totally different. There was another great store in Wuppertal. I worked at the time. I was mm -hmm. like 21. Mm -hmm. And the bass player always bought his drinks there. Mm -hmm. And he asked my boss if he knew any guitar players that <laughs> are into that kind of music. Yeah. So I have this young yeah. guy working here. So I was like cleaning guitars in yeah. the background and I was hearing it with one ear. Mm -hmm. And I was like, access, of course, because I. No joke, I was, yeah. we talked about it in Hamburg. Yeah. I listened to them when I was like 15 or 16. Teenage, yeah. So I, I, I said, well, I need to be in that band because this would be the next step. And it was, it, you know, it happened very quickly. You know, I did the audition mm -hmm. and um, also something for, uh, for uh, upcoming guitar players because I also have many students that are in that age now, like 20, 21, very crucial, important age. And... Um, they said to me, well, you have two weeks, and it was over Christmas and New Year's Eve. Um, they said, you have two weeks, and this is the set list. Sure. And they, they sent me the, 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 set, the set list, 23 songs, mm -hmm. and I learned them all in two weeks. Mm -hmm. When I got to the studio and we started to play, after f five uh, songs, they said to me, well, we've heard enough. Thank, Thank you. you. And I said, well, I want to play that song. I want to play that song. And I want to, if I'm here, can we play that song? And later, three weeks later, they told me when I, when I got the job, they told me that I was the only guy who prepared the whole set. See, that's the point. See, that's the thing. Everybody else, and there were like 30 other players, yeah, yeah. they <clears> prepared <throat> like three to five songs. Yeah, no, no, no. The, the thing is, if you take stuff seriously. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And I had exactly the same experience. I mean, I, I, I subbed, you know, for Ali, <laughs> back to the thing uh, with Edu Zanke, who is finally, um, yeah, he, he died two years ago of cancer. But Edu mm. Zanke was kind of the best, first German uh, soul mm. singer with German lyrics. Very good guy, great producer. And what happened is I prepared so well that he said in the rehearsal, I don't know, after two songs or three songs, you know, um, 
the guy knows knows his shit. Yeah. Let's have and eat some ice cream. I said, hey, can we please play the yeah, third you song? See, you you know, because I was so, oh no. no, forget it, it's okay. But I was serious and I was playing the gig and my first gig was on live, live with the band in in on television. I'm not, you know, it's like no real rehearsal, only half rehearsal, but it worked, you know? Yeah. And this is how to, to, to be professional. Yeah. If you show that, um, this is the experience and people notice that. That's and, true. And later on in my career, Purple Schulz was looking for a guitar player and he was friend of him, you know, Edu Zanki. So he called Edo and asked, hey, do you know a great guitar player? Said, hey, there's this guy from Saarbrücken, he, he's killer. So I got his number, boom. And then this is how things go from one to another. If you are this cool guy that says, oh yeah, I just know yeah, the shit, you know, two songs. Definitely. It's not the way to do no, it. No. Be dedicated. Totally. To and then, yeah. then I mean, we are both examples that yeah. this attitude That's true. was helping uh, our career. Dedication, total commitment yeah. to the situation, and uh, being mm -hmm. humble yeah. is very important. In that yeah. because you are nobody. You know, I was like 20 to 25 years younger than the rest. Yeah. There was no reason for them to be like very, let's say, helpful. If you need, you know, do we have questions regarding that riff or whatever? No, because I knew that many other guys could have done it. Yeah, sure. Because it was it was my job to be prepared. See, the point is yeah. there are so many great guitar players out there. I mean, including some of the guys here in the chat, I'm pretty sure. But the point is how to be different from the crowd. Oh, yes. And this is simply know your shit, be there, be, be there be on time. time. Exactly, you know. Yeah. Don't be a problem. Oh, be yeah. a problem solver. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's the kind of thing. I know so many, may, I, don't, I won't uh, you know, be mentioning any names. Yeah. But I know so many people that are good musicians. Absolutely. That are always late. They don't. They don't have money for gas. Yeah. They don't, They mm -hmm. are always in a in a position. People, you know, say, "Oh my God! Well, he's he's yeah. a great guy." But so much chaos. So much, yeah. you know, problems. So many problems. And uh, sometimes there are guys that are maybe not as good on the technical kind of side, but they have all the other. You know, you Assets. know Assets. Yeah. Assets. They, yeah. they know what yeah. they have their shit together. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's more important than the other thing. Yeah. You know. Um hey. Ah talk, talking about Exes, yeah. was this the time when Dirk Brandt was playing drums or uh, was he later? There were I had my, my Exes time was like with uh, three three drums. drums. If, the first <laughs> the first was with Andre Hegers. <laughs> okay. Then uh, Alex Landborg, yeah. which you know is one still of still your from best friends, friends, you know. Yeah. And then Dirk Brandt, which okay. is also an, an yeah. incredible drummer and great person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always, mean, always loved him. I, I can tell. I mean, Dirk is a killer drummer. Drummy, what's his? He does a lot, lot of drum th um, things on on uh, Facebook and especially on Instagram. I think Drummy. Yeah, yeah, Rand yeah, or something, yeah. and then it's like, doo, 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 doo. Yeah, yeah. if you want to learn yeah. killer fields, yeah, check I him out. I, I did many gigs with him, and this guy is also somebody who is, who is prepared. Yeah, absolutely. So. Any great, great kind of humor, by the way. Up, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, 2010, there is 21 octane. 21 octane, yeah. Yeah, with Alex Lundberg. Yeah, that was my, that was, um, you know, after playing for other people for so many years at that point, well, not so many years, but it seemed like a, seemed like a long time. I wanted, I wanted to do something on my own. I said, well, I can do that as well, you know. And um, we formed 21 Octane as an outlet where just everything was possible for us musically. We just did what we wanted to do. We had great people in the band uh, in the first years, and we had actually... You know, a good record contract with AFM Records, uh, a label from Hamburg, and um, we actually sold quite a good amount of CDs in 2014. Still, you know, some uh, numbers that are hard to imagine, achieve yeah. these, these, these days, days yeah. and uh, especially for a newcomer. And um, we went on tour with Uriah Heep, where I met Mick Box, which was to this day uh, a mentor of mine. And, and friend and uh, yeah that was a great time we did two records and then 
as you said earlier, it wasn't the music. We destroyed the band by ourselves. You know, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I'm able to laugh, but it was very, very yeah. tough. It was like the woman of your dreams you wanted to marry forever. And then uh, you killed it. Uh, we, the band killed it, you know, uh, by itself. Um, and uh, now it just feels like, a, like an affair, like a, a quick romance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the two albums are still there. So everybody, if, if people want to hear it, it's on, of course, it's on Spotify. It's 21 Octane, two albums, mm -hmm. Into the Open and 2.0. Yeah. Wow. And so after this, and now, now it's kind of the... Then I did everything with everybody. That sounds very naughty, I, I must admit. <laughs> um, But hey, it's a phase. <laughs> it is. That was a phase. I just wanted to... To be independent, I would say, okay, I would do that, I would do that. And then I did an, uh, an, an, um, a project with uh, a great keyboard player from, from LA, David Burtok. He's a great, great um, composer for, for movies. He's working for Netflix and stuff. And he's one of my dearest friends. <laughs> Jen is laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, so, and, and we recorded an, an album, but we didn't get a record deal. And it, the, the thing was, It was just uh, too far away. He was living in LA, I was living in Germany. So it was just a, um, let's say, a studio project for a time. And then, then I uh, joined Pink Cream 69. Yeah. And we all hope that the COVID thing will be, or will disappear. So you can go on tour with Pink Cream in, <laughs> in a great way. Yeah. And, you know. There are some festivals in the summertime I, well, we will uh, see. We will see. I don't yeah. know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, okay. Before we come to the part <laughs> for the best and most expensive guitars in the shops, oh. we probably get a little bit into the question we had. What did you play uh, at the beginning? There was kind of a Why, question uh, PRS something with PRS why or how did you get involved with PRS something like that yeah yeah I mean um, j just for what you are using currently in the studio which has no deal or anything it's just because it's there you played you picked up this PRS in the store you know he didn't even come with a guitar no. because he knew there's shit loads of PRS I, exactly I, I just uh, jumped uh, on the <clears throat> on the uh, subway and uh, because I'm living here now as uh, Thomas said mm -hmm. And I just thought this is a very unique guitar. Three P90s, three P90s, yeah. very interesting. And I like the color. It looks quite like the color of my uh, student's guitar, like um, Janis Klinert. Mm -hmm. he, has, he, he also has a PRS that, sounds, that looks like that a little bit, a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think it's beautiful. It's, it's a great guitar and it sounds quite interesting, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, and this is now plugged into the Iridium. Yeah. And the Iridium is plugged into the blue box. And this is... Uh <laughs> Sounds great. So this was the classic mm -hmm. channel or the, the, the vintage channel. And no extra effects, just... Yeah. P90s, very interesting. Yeah.
There's oh. another PRS sitting here. What, what's the story about this one? Yeah, this would have been my second choice for tonight. Okay. I mean, it's quite obvious. It's quite light. It's what? What is it? It's a McCarty. Ah, it's the fifty-seven. Is yeah. this the? Ah, yeah. Okay, I know. It. Oh, did, okay. Let yeah. me let let me maybe I play this it is, thing. It is not in tune, though. I, uh, I can you fix have it. To, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or is it? Look at that that color. I mean, ah, oh, it's very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I would call this Katzen burst. Cat, <laughs> cat burst. You know, if you if you have like a cat. Uh, Oh yeah, this is all over the place. I think I Bye Jan. <laughs> Coffee soon. Yep. Bye. See you back in Germany. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, where is this? Oh. Somewhere else. Um, yeah, in the meantime we can talk about you have been a fender and or C before. Yeah, from uh, 2016 to 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very interesting time, obviously, because it's um, obviously to work with Fender and to be um, to be uh, to be an artist, a Fender artist, a Fender and Dorsey is uh, something uh, that it, that is nice nice to uh, to have you know, on to, your uh, yeah, business yeah. card. Yeah, and uh, great for years, but I have to say, well, I mean, great people there. Great, um, great journeys, great clinics, great, great workshops where, where uh, exhibitions or trade shows were still quite well, happening, quite and, happening. And, and alive. Yeah. And uh, it was very good. And I, I could see the, the uh, Fender, Fender Mexico uh, factory and also in California. So I was at, at both. Okay. That was that was very nice and um, very cool trip, but I have to be honest. In the end, and many people, uh, Mark, you'll be taking that PRS back with you. I think. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's quite a good idea. I think about it. In the end, because many people were were asking me that over uh, social media, why did you leave Fender and why are you now with PRS? Because why should you? Lee Fender. Fender, you know why? Fender I mean, makes Fender great Fender. guitars and, and, and it's one of the biggest names. It's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it is like... The thing is, the way they are now approaching for two or three years now, I think, um, is they are going that very indie, alternative, walk, pop, rockish way. It's, it, because it's a very, you know, Billy Eilish is, is... This kind of music is very on vogue. It's everybody... Not everybody, but it's a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. It's in the mainstream, and yeah. they are chasing that direction. You know, this is what they. And I had many, many meetings. Believe me, guys. Of course, I'm not able to talk with, with you yeah, about yeah. the meetings, but we have many meetings where I ask them, "Am I still wanted as an artist musically?" Yeah. yeah. Because back in the day, Fender was very, very broad and diverse, like real diverse, not like. Pseudo diverse because everything is diverse these days. But when, when you look, when you have a closer look, it's not diverse. It's just like there's a bubble, yeah. and which calls itself diverse. So yeah. back in the days, in the 70s, 80s, also 90s, Fender had people like from you know the Edge, yeah. punk guys from like the Sex Pistols yeah, or whatever yeah. to Ingrid Malmsteen. Yeah. So th it was like a whole spectrum of music, like the whole market. Right. They had the whole market. Yeah. So. And for me, and uh, as I said before, I, you know, I traveled to London many, many times. I had meetings with, uh, with the A&R people. And I said, well, you cut my part, like one third of my, where, where my identity, my, my, my artistic expression is, you cut it off. You cut it off. And um, because it's not very mainstreamish fashionable mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was really something that was hard for me to accept because mm -hmm. then you have just two possibilities. You say, well, I'm now d doing Kings of Lean, be the Irish co kind yeah. of music and you just don't accept who you are. You know, no, no 16 notes anymore, yeah. no modes anymore, just like Like 
and uh, or you just say okay this is just it's like being in a relationship sometimes it just doesn't work anymore it's just not you know the relationship is parting you know exactly i mean yeah. this is the thing some people don't understand there is always a thing behind the scenes and this is changing because you know as we talked about being a musician you know your shit anyhow you do your music yeah. but on the other hand there is this other level of uh, being a professional guy as a musician but on the other hand there's also a professional industry absolutely and if that doesn't match for whatever reasons yeah. sometimes you have a new guy in yeah. the company that people change people change and and especially also for for the young guys that are uh, uh, watching this they want to be professional the people that are working for you record labels managements booking agencies instrument companies yeah that they might work great for you and they love what you do in one year there is a problem with marcus mike mike Mc. Ah, Marco, we need uh, the handheld mic because your battery is gone. My battery is gone. Uh, wait a minute. Battery. I, I fixed that. We we hey we we we, we mic you up with a second mic as well and then we have all the it's, it's stereo yeah wait a minute we we make it here so one two one two what about this test one two do we have a we have, do we have signal ah where's the thing well but that's live you know it's okay. like with wet and dust back in the day ah yeah okay hello hello test one two check check one two wait a minute Marco I. I do this in a nicer way, maybe here. The, the microphone is scratching for Marco. <laughs> scratching. We are no DJs, we make no scratch fucking hell. So let's try this. Test one, two, one, two. Do we have a, a good signal? One, two, one, two. Better? One, two, check. Okay, yeah. So, so. so yeah, that, this is something people don't, don't get, you know. There's one year maybe that everybody loves you. Yeah. Oh, we love what you do. This is th exactly what we were looking for. Yeah. And one and a half years later, there are new people. They don't have anything to do with you. They, are, yeah. they have a completely different taste. Yeah. And this is now where the struggle begins. Yeah. And this is something that is very really like the fighting. You know, doing this for like 15 years or like do like for like 30 years, 25 years or whatever professionally, it's not only the, it's by, by far, it's not what you play. Yeah. It's the people, the industry, yeah. and, and the whole thing. See, in my case, I've been with Usen Ketna for 27 years. Mm. And I had the best 15 years at the beginning, and I had some years which were okay, and I, I didn't like it at the end. This is finally why I left the company and did my own thing, yeah. because blah, blah, blah. That's a long, long uh, special episode about that. Fact is, just for one thing is, fact is, these days, Bernd Schneider, the chief um, engineer, is not there anymore. Exactly. Even, even Rüdiger Forse. Rüdiger was the last man standing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Rüdiger, he is the... Uh, we've been... Whatever. He's not there anymore. Um, people change. And the new people there are different people. Absolutely. And, um, well, this is, feels different and... They have to do different things, and Absolutely. therefore I had to move on, which is all how it is. So yeah. this is behind the scenes, and um, so, well, I had a great time with Fender for that. They did we did many clinics, and it was all good. But at some point, I had to go. Yeah, and I had to. I have to say that the switch from Fender to PS was so quick, because I said to myself, well, if you want to work with a company that you can really relate to and you can identify with. It, it, PRS is the one. Yeah. PRS is the one to go where I can really, f where I thought I would be in the right hands with the right people. And here, for instance, I know Gavin, who is in the UK, yeah. who is kind of um, PRS Europe yeah. for how many years? Of many, Ages. Yeah, many, many years. Yeah. Yeah. I know him from at least 15 years yeah. uh, ago, back in the days. 
and this guy is a nice guy and yeah. so if you know yeah, he's a real gentleman yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a real gentleman and so I, I totally understand if some some door closes another one opens and and uh, um, I I got in touch with Detlef Browns which he is the, the um, German the German guy and for 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 Austria as well yeah and um, we had some lunch in Frankfurt uh, I remember in, in October 2019 well, oh. this was my tea <laughs> So that was Mr. Blue's tea. <laughs> yeah, and but a, f a cup of Fender. So we left Fender you see, on the floor. You see, that <laughs> was the that was the payback. Mm. Okay, but by the way, I drink English tea, which is um, Tetley's tea bags. Oh, very nice one. Yeah, I, I know that one. Yeah, 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 yeah very good. Uh, Milky style. Can we leave it like this? Okay. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, and we, we had some lunch, and and we we talked about plants and. Um, and then I got in touch with the PRS USA guys and yeah. they said, well, let's talk at NAM." And I met, first of all, I, I flew to Cambridge to, to PRS Europe and to, to meet the guys in the UK. And uh, one month later, NAM 2020, uh, one month before COVID. The last uh, name we also. I had a meeting with uh, the man himself, with Paul Reed Smith, and yeah. they introduced me to him. and. Uh, and he asked me, you know, and he, he knew from the from the artist relation guys that I was coming from Fender, mm -hmm. and he wanted to know why, why, and of why, course. and yeah. why why I why I'm here now, and why why I why I choose to be now with PRS and yeah. not with Fender. So of course I'm not you know able to talk about that, but I I basically talked told him the story I just told you, yeah. and uh, my heart was like you know beating like you know wow. It was like the man himself, and he was—he took his oh. time. We had a coffee together, and and uh, so that was very. It's a great company, In incredible people, incredible guitars, incredible, yeah. ah, incredible instruments. Yeah. Yeah. So here, yeah, I just got this in my hands. What it? What is it? That fifty-seven. Yeah, this is something two, special. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it means. But let me have a little go on that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I, I just played some notes, and you, you can see how easy that guitar plays, how great it sounds, and here is why I could live with such a guitar because it has air. Coming yeah. back to the tone, for my tone, I need I need that breathe. I need to have air in the tone. I call that air, and and this is like when I.
cool. Yeah, okay, so cool guitar. It says 108, which means it's probably a limited yeah, run. Yeah, something of, like that. Yeah, you can see yeah. that on the, on the head. Headstock, okay. Yeah. Um, so, great guitars. Paul Reed Smith, for me, Paul Reed Smith, I know him also from trade shows, blah, 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 because, you know, yeah. massive people or trade show people. Uh, I miss that, by the way. I miss that. Yeah, I, I miss the trade shows. Um, but, you know, he. I think we even played one day together mm. without knowing. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like yeah. somewhere in Italy yeah. and it's like this guy plays and this guy plays and makes some music. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's a player. I he, mean, he's, he's, a, yeah. he's a player. He's, yeah. he's totally dedicated. He's not yeah. just a salesman that is, oh, you know, yesterday I sold iPhones, whatever, yeah, and yeah, now no. I'm into guitars. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so great, so, yeah. great guitars and, you know, yeah, it's definitely. always a killer quality. That That's something that I have... Um, if you pick up a PRS guitar, it's always, I would say, in very good shape yeah. and very high quality. And the rest is, is it your taste? Absolutely. Yes or not? Absolutely. And so... And they all, always set it up in, uh, in Cambridge when they get it from the US, or also the, uh, the SE models. Ah, the cheaper ones. They, they uh, take care of that and before they, they send it to the stores. Right. Here, yeah. talking about SE, there is a new Silver Sky yeah, coming. John, yeah, yeah, John uh, Mayer. John Silver Mayer, Sky. which is kind of a Strat a guitar. A, a kind of, yeah. S-type oh, guitar. A, a little bit. <laughs> well, uh, I think he also went the same way like you. It's kind of yeah, it's, from it's, here to there. Yeah, he, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was uh, also a little bit unhappy. Well, maybe yeah. also to too traditional in a way because Mayer. I mean in his own way John Mayer is also kind of a traditional I think so yeah yeah, yeah he, yeah, he respects yeah. roots he definitely and uh, not saying that he's not a, a modern artist I, I but, know exactly what you mean but he has yeah. a feel for yeah. tradition yeah. in a good way in a good way yeah not in a in a everything was better back in the day no but no no, no. Just, he does he his is, own thing exactly yeah, yeah. so agree. so totally high respect for for him yeah same here and uh, so the Silver Sky was kind of that guitar coming to Paul Reed Smith. And now the thing is, um, the Silver Sky has the affordable yeah. SE version. Yeah. And uh, it's released this week officially, but of course... With, yeah, the whole, nobody, I think, has it in, now. in Europe yeah. now. It will take some weeks. Months. I think... Mar I think March or April or whatever, that's what I heard, but I don't know, I'm not a salesman. I don't know, I heard it, it was just rumors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, if you do have any more PRS day, <laughs> this is my jam. Okay, uh, Lukas Fowler. Uh, yeah, hey, um, hi this Lukas. Lukas is, uh, by the way, having the Iridium and he did some great videos and he's, he's a guy that I will bring on the Academy of Tone whenever there's time for him, uh, pretty soon, hopefully. So, hi, Lucas. Man, there's a couple of guys. That Different I... kind of tone between Fender and PRS. I noticed this at a live event. But once I'm, once I'm gonna... Hey, Thomas, your team is really... Yeah, that's true. What, what are you reading? Different kind of tone between Fenders and PRS. I noticed... Yeah, of course. There... Hey, <laughs> there is not exactly the tone. Yeah. If, if we... First, let's start where... Um, if, if we are talking strats, you're talking to me, okay? I played my 61 strat and we have, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pre-CBS strats oh, on the wall. Unbelievable. I, I will stand up in a minute and I will kill you all with pre-CBS strats. And they're all different. Yeah, yeah. So if you have just Fender strats, even from one year, you will find out there is a different tone. What, what's going Do on? Do you think that Nick Huber guitars on the same level as the Pierce? That's a good question. I, I know the guys, great people, very, very cool people, incredible guitars. Um, I prefer Pierce though. Um, but it's t as, as Thomas <laughs> said, everybody should, you know, Try out, try out by themselves, you know. You make your own, yeah, decision, own, your own decision, and all the manufacturers make an offer. Absolutely. And, and I know Nick Huber also as a very dedicated yeah, guy. Absolutely. Um, and that is always what I find sim sympathetic, sympathetic in a way. Like 
positive because uh, there's the money driven companies and there's the passion driven companies Absolutely. and I'm on the money driven camp uh, company said that's not my thing this is this is this is where the sharks live and I'm just a small fish in the pond <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it all happens. Okay, so but now, yeah. Shall we? No, I I played a Porter Smith. For, you know what kind of price range this is? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, above five k. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. This is a cheap guitar. This is yeah. a, This is one. Wait, this no, is this yeah. is the cheapo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I show you something. Now it gets. Now it gets uh, ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. This guitar is, um, <laughs> I was told, 260,000. Two, six, zero, and three zeros. Okay? I try not to break <laughs> anything. No, don't do it. Don't put, don't put your T on that guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, I mean, if this would be 10,000 euros, I would buy it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. it is worth that yeah, money, yeah. but this is uh, way out of my uh, price range. Yeah, yeah, same here. But for um, me, the, you know, my pleasure about this job that I'm doing here and tomorrow is I can actually play such instruments and then...
<laughs> so this is what people refer to a burst. Um, but to be honest, I played many bursts in this room. I played some bursts before, and this is one of the real good ones. And wow. this is 59. Um, this is why it's so expensive. This is a real 59. Yeah, this, this is, very, is oh my this god. Is, this is the. This is why people. Sell their houses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. and, their, and their marriage. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> I heard. Yeah, I'm not married, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the the thing the thing about this thing is, you can tell. Um, yeah, you can tell that I I instantly make music with it. Um, it is yeah. a vintage. It speaks. It speaks. It, it, speaks. Yeah. it, it does the stuff that I want. And here is the thing: most people think. The ports are only big sounding, no. but 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 the thing is, no, it has to. There's this kind of transparency. There is this kind of. See guys, if I had a Les Paul like that, I would have done records with it. But I knew there were guitars out like that, but even at the age of 21, I had something like this in my hand for 10,000 Deutschmarks. It was too much money for me. And, you know, this is how I think my Les Paul should sound like. <laughs> yeah, I can relate it. So. Yeah. So, uh, what are the comments? Hello, everybody. That's always good. Uh, a long and healing with your eyes on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
how does the neck pickup sound like? Okay, I show you a few sounds, so just you understand what is going on. Let's start with a bridge on one. It's clean. On two. Uh, on three. On four. On five. On six. On seven. This was the bridge pickup and what you could hear it it cleans up it has all you know the timbres okay let me show you another thing which is kind of astonishing if you put the volume like on five and if i roll down the treble to five it's not really dark interesting it's less volume Tiny. yeah Then the more I turn it down, then it starts to get low, but still has this upper press. I put it down to three, to two, and now... So this was, somebody asked about the neck pickup. Let's do the same thing on the neck really quick. Um, so, one on the neck. And so, 
the same thing here. I mean, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. This, so, is, this is music history. Music yeah, history. and then I show you something else, which is the in-between. Let's put like uh, the bridge and the neck in the middle position and put everything. This is your bridge. This is the in-between. And this is the neck. There's another beautiful word coming out of this combination. Anyway, I'm sure if you buy the guitar, they will give you an M1 for free <laughs> because the cost doesn't matter. Yeah, I heard some rumors. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is part of my fascination for vintage guitars. Why I always liked my '61 Strat. Um, and other great vintage guitars. And to be honest, not every vintage guitar is that great. Yeah, But yeah, if you find some special pieces, they are exceptional. They are just on that extra level, on a different planet. Yeah, definitely. And they, they bring that extra special from yeah. your personality yeah. to life. Yeah. I, I, I and for me, the whole thing is I can learn from this instrument. I cannot afford this instrument, but my ear is trained to memorize sounds. Mm -hmm. And when I work on my Les Paul, I have that color in my head. I have that kind of thing that I want. I have blah, blah, blah. And knowing that tone is precious to me. That's very valuable. Yeah. It's, it is like, you know, if you're a cook and you go to a different restaurant and say, hey, this guy has, Absolutely. has a great taste. How is he doing the dishes? And, and, and how is he creating the menu and how, how to, to, to make it blend in a way and all that stuff. This is what I learned from doing this. So, um, Fantastic. Yeah. What an honor to be with an original 59. <laughs> 59. Unreal. Yeah, and, and, and a good one. There are 59s out there that I even would I mean, of course, if you give it to me, they are shit worth sure. sh shitloads of money, but yeah. I wouldn't play them. It's such an instrument you can never play on nah, stage. Nah, nah. So my kind of intention of doing this is like, maybe one day I can crack the code and get a guitar like that and have such a tone in a Les Paul for myself yeah. that, is, that I can reproduce, that I can bring on stage uh, and if it's getting, getting lost, uh, I yeah, still have yeah, it. Yeah. And therefore, I'm so much interested in getting the recipe of these instruments. Same it. thing with my Strat and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. stuff. So that's my thing. Um, I, I, I played some 50 Strats here. And there were some that were just un, unbelievable. Where you just say, okay, this is a Strat. Yeah. I played so many different Strats in my life. Of course, it's everybody. You know? yeah. But this was just something different there. Yeah. Yeah, and we had um, a guy that played that guitar having a birthday, Jimmy Page. Mr. Jimmy Page.
my favorite favorite guitar players of all time actually. Um, not too many people know that because everybody thinks I'm into whatever Ingrid Malmsteen or uh, some metal guys. The no, shredders. No, I'm I, I'm definitely also con don't consider myself as a shred guy. Yeah. Also, a mis one of the misconceptions about my my uh, my person, but um, I love Jimmy. I love I yeah. always loved him, and Led Zeppelin. They were As not a just a hard rock band. Everybody yeah. thinks, oh yeah, I miss this kind of music, like hard rock, like Led Zeppelin. No, they were so colorful. Absolutely. Unbelievable. No, non, no record sounded the same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the acoustic uh, oh. songs. But the thing is, riffs, oh. bonzo, the drumming, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. It, it, I mean, it's still up to, to, to today. This is an attitude, how to play drums and listen, how... Listen to the bass on the snare. Yeah. And this is just <laughs> so unique. <laughs> we live in an age where you don't, you cannot separate drummers anymore because yeah. it's all sampling, yeah. you know, resampling and stuff. Every snare sounds the same, every bass drums, I hate it. Same here. You listen to it and you know it's him. You listen to it, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's uh, Roger Taylor. You listen to it, it's, 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 you know, yeah, uniqueness. They were unique and he was, ah, I could go on and on. I okay, I, I see. Next comment here is Johnny Love. Any 1950A <laughs> flying V in the shop, about 100 in total ever made, I heard. Guess what? Tomorrow morning, 10.30, the owner of a 1958 Les Paul will come, Mr. Rudolf Schenker. Ah. So he will be sitting here yeah. and I sit here in Great. the morning. So after breakfast, um, I think he has a couple of those. Yes, I, I bet. And I had the honor to play that guitar um, last time I was here, like five, six months ago. Um, he will bring another one, um, but his precious 58, I have already played and done a video with that guitar. So um, anyway, tomorrow morning we will do a little interview and you can check out the guitar at the World of Vintage Guitars from number one Guitar Center Hamburg. They have a YouTube channel and I've made a nice little video with that guitar. Have some fun tomorrow. Oh that's, yeah. That's one, I'm, I'm, one, I'm, of, I'm, one of the legends as well, one of the legends. Yeah. Well, and of course, uh, he has another famous brother who, who's He's right. Led Zeppelin was proc, definitely. Yes. Everybody thinks yeah. they are a classic rock band. No, they were really, in the truest sense, a proc band. They uh, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they, 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 they stretched the boundaries of that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. format of rock. Absolutely. Brought it to a new level Absolutely. and uh, created, you know, mm -hmm. killer. I'm to totally... Uh, Digging Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin 2 is probably my favorite and some other songs, yeah. but the 2 is the one that I can hear from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And it's like just a great rock album. It is the essential. Actually, how many more times from the first oh, record? First record, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. This is fun. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And you know what? Pizza soon. We will have some pizza later. And this is a great <laughs> thought, you know, because I'm very hungry, but that's a different story. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> tomorrow we have Rudolf sitting here, Rudolf Schenker. And this week, I think on the 10th of January, his brother, Michael, ah. was Michael's birthday. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you have too many mics there. <laughs> uh, Mike's, Michael. Mike, uh, my, oh, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 
Photoshop, who is the, the drummer I recorded my uh, Rock Anarchy live album with, is now playing with Michael again. Wow. He used to play with him, I don't know, 15 years ago. And now, since the last three years, he's back on tour with Michael Checker constantly as his main drummer. And um, also, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but also Michael Schenker, one of the guys with such a distinctive tone oh, yeah. and sound. And you know, a riff like rock bottom. You know? yeah. it's, it's just also one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, and then, Michael Schenker, V, we should have, a, and we have another Scorpions. <laughs> Actually, a great German band. Oh, no, no, definitely. Huh? Definitely, definitely one of the greatest and great riffs, great and the Scorpions in the 70s, also with Uli John Uli. Roth. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, again, what, what a unique character in any sense. Yeah. In any sense. He actually, I met him, the first time I met him was Music Master 2011. Yeah. And I had the honor of meeting in the Marriott yeah. Hotel in the sports bar. Yeah. And I said, oh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Roth. Roth, it's <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. I'm, I'm such a fan. Thanks, thanks for the music. <laughs> And then he asked me, he said, well, he did, yeah, well, a pleasure. And he asked me if I understand music and colors. If I... Yeah, yeah, he is and, about that. And I said, well, if I'm ready to learn more about them. I said, whoa. And uh, I was 24 back then. I said, okay, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Now I know more about it because uh, I met him many more, many more times after it. But yeah. that was something like... Yeah. yeah, interesting. I played a little, uh, a few gigs with him, like uh, with Viktor Smolsky, myself, and Uli. Of course, Uli. of course, I was, I yeah. was there. Oh, yeah. you were there, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing about Uli is, uh, he is a very unique character in a positive way, because he he's goes beyond. I mean, what he did in... Oh. Nine, 1976 uh, uh, were... Wow. You know, all, all unbelievable no, no, stuff. No, really, no, really, really. Far uh, advanced uh, from other... People. Definitely. Yeah, so anyway, this band went to a lot of great stuff and I will talk to Rudolf tomorrow yeah. who is probably responsible for the hit riffs I mean you know he, he is, is he's yeah. not a solo guy he no. is he's the man behind he's, but he's a riff master I mean hit wow, he it used to the max ACDC yeah. Yeah. they know what they're doing absolutely anyway um Ufo doctor doctor I see the great song yeah sure um 
Wow. So, anyone for this guitar? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I put it back in the case just uh, to make sure nothing happens to this beauty. never been really into P90s, but I have to admit that it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's very... This is a 1960 um, 26900. Um, yeah. Who cares? Yeah, I, I, yeah, this is the one I played a couple of weeks ago. Unbelievable. Anyway, another nice guitar. Another classic. What yeah. year is this one again? 60, 1960. Yeah. You can tell, I mean, this had a slapboard neck. It has, yeah. my 61 is kind of similar. Uh, this is why I can three pick tone, it. Three-tone sunburst, this is where it started with three-tone sunburst? This is a two-tone. Oh. Or is it a faded three? Okay. Let me see if there's any. 
When, when did they start doing three to three? Uh, Fender history guys. I'm sure that they had early 60s. 61. I have seen uh, 61s with three tone. I think Michael liked the 50 watt Marshall ah, more than the hundreds. No. Yes, because they are creamier, just like myself. I like the both. For absolutely, different, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Uh, but that's a, that's a Marshall question. <laughs> There's some special chemistry between the players this time. Each one seems to know exactly what the other. That's a very nice compliment. Thank you. We ha we've never played together. Only it, once. Uh, very. You know. This is the first time actually yeah. we have time. We take time. Yeah. And I have to say that I'm enjoying this immensely. Really. Same here. Yeah. So it's all improvised, by the way. We didn't yeah. have any. It's not scripted. Like n not even one percent. Yeah. Which is great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, my script is this. This, <laughs> this is my this piece of paper. This is my piece of paper. This is all I have in mind, and you know, it is history <laughs> anyway. <laughs> bye bye. Um, so, but. <laughs> Another great guitar. Um, I pick up one more, maybe maple neck, just yeah. for fun. Yeah. So we hear and hear a bit of a clean tone. Uh, what are we having here? If you have more questions, by the way, guys, thanks for um, thanks for being there. Thanks for your interest. But if you have more questions, don't be shy. Uh, it's great to to get in talk, uh, get in contact with you. Yes. <laughs> so great. see, this is my script for tomorrow. It says a '57 Stratocaster, original sunburst finish, big C neck shape. Yep. Um, neck date is eight fifty-seven. Body plate is six fifty-seven. Uh, big frets, so this has been refretted. Um, vintage feel, wear, blah blah. So powerful bridge pickup. Let's see what we are talking about. That's the beauty of a maple strat. They have this big, big chunk of clean range, you know. Bridge pickup. Hey guys, this is my. Yeah, I use the boost and.
Let us see what picks do you play. The super hard ones. I use the uh, Dunlop Jazz 3 Max Grip. Okay, and I have a triangle pick from the forbidden <laughs> organic material. <laughs> the best material. That's yeah, of course, of, yeah, of course. Uh, because uh, some people eat it as soup. I don't do that. <laughs> I play the thing. This is what I'm playing right now. Is it, is it a big one? Is it, yeah, it's, it's a big, big. one. Wow. It, this, is, okay, this, is, this is very different, you yeah. see? Yeah, yeah. So I have the biggest pick uh, wow. tonight here. But this is... Um, Tomorrow I will have a, a bunch of jazz guitars as well, so this is why I have this pick. Yeah, Sometimes sure. I have my home plate picks. Uh, my home? Anyway, I have my home plate picks. Where is it? Here's my home plate pick. And there's a, a pick by a friend of mine, Tommy Taylor from the band ah. Kiss. <laughs> nice guy. Uh, you know, um, but different style again. Behind the scenes, we all know each other in a way. No, definitely. Okay, and this is the home plate pick. You see this do, 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 uh, against my thing. Okay. Can you, uh, can you tell us about the blue guitar cap next to you? Seems to be something different on you. Ah, this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a prototype, and this is an open back tweed uh, cabinet. It's a um, usually. I have the nano cap, there is the fat cap, and there's the twin cap, which are close back cabinets, Celestian Marshall style. Okay, and of course, I'm always working on <laughs> things in the background, you know, on the second level, this is where the, the interesting shit is yeah. happening. And now I can actually talk about this. This cabinet is at a point where I just need to play it live, and of course we have a problem, but... Eventually. Eventually, yeah. and on the 29th, I already checked it, we have a gig with my dear friend Alex Bayroth. Ah! Um, and I, I thought, uh, Alex, if, if you, uh, you can play the cabinet and I come and listen, and then it ended up, it's like, we both play together, so I can play the cabinet Perfect. and listen uh, how it feels. Yeah. Um, with my speaker here, that's very important. So I need to have some last approval for myself, how it yeah. feels on stage. But on what I achieved so far is something outstanding, which I was looking for two years already. This cabinet project is a two year ongoing project. It is um, open back, it is the Fender style, but it can handle overdrive sounds. Yeah, definitely. Just as much as good as the open back sounds. And that's something I was missing. And here comes the third thing. It's using my own neodymium speaker, which means it's super lightweight. The whole thing here is like nothing. And it's a 100 watt speaker. Wow. So it's scary light, yeah. it's scary loud. It takes clean and overdrive. And that's a project I'm working on. I have no release date, guys. It's like, uh, but it's something, it's within the reach of, I will start to make a landing, a finish of that project. Because I, I had five different types of housings, I had different mm. types of speakers, I, blah, blah, blah. I tortured my speaker manufacturer, went through so many samples. I bet. Um, but I'm happy now. Um, I double checked with a few of my friends already. And of course, next Sunday, Ali Neander is coming to my place. He has to check it. Just around the corner, there's Niels Finkeisen. <laughs> uh, and he checked the cabinet. And I, I want to get you know, feedback from other players. I will play it myself. And when I think it is as good as I think now, I make this a project and it will be released maybe this year, latest next year. Yeah. Um, that's the story of this cabinet. Very cool. Unbelievable lightweight and it handles the power of a Fender Twin. You can put them side by side. This is what I have done last Saturday with my wow. dear friend Klaus. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a thing I'm working on. 
Very, very cool chemistry. I'm in the same room and it's extremely cool to hear them both playing. That's very nice. By the way, Niels Fink Eisen, uh, thanks for having us, for working <laughs> overtime yeah, and for ordering, for ordering pizza. For ordering pizza. Great store. I, I, I love this store and it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Marco, just looking up, you're up on Wikipedia. What do you, when do you think you will finish your current album? Yes, actually, I'm, I'm working on my first solo record called Guitar Stories. Yep. And I will, I will make Mr. Thomas Blue play on it. He doesn't know it yet, <laughs> but he will. He ah, will. Okay, this is the way it works. I know. Victor Smolsky is already on there and my dear friend Gretchen Mann. Actually, her real name is Gretchen. And it's a true story. She's one of my dearest friends. And the Americans are not able to, to say the, her name in the right way. She has German origin, so that's, that's why her real name is called Gretchen and not Gretchen, just uh, to be, uh, uh, just to tell the story. Um, probably end of this year, I will be done, finished, and, and um, just go to my website, marcoreadguitar.com, and everything will be on there all the information and yeah thank you thank you for the question thank you for the question so um i have a last thing for you surprise oh. this is the black ah, <laughs> my past in one little box yeah of course and uh, if i get the stuff working which i'm not sure if i can because there is a cable chaos going on but maybe not um if you would plug in, wait a minute, let me see if I get uh, some noise is promising. Noise is so. Can you make it sound? When I was 22, this was the only thing I could play. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, what I try to, to, to see, I mean, is, is simply my, my typical AB thing. It's like people play something they know and that is all tube versus something they don't know yet. And <laughs> it's nano tube and uh, it's doing the job. I'm not into you know any esoteric thing we can Same talk here. about. Same I'm not into that as well. Yeah. Let's, let's check one string. I think it's very interesting. Yeah. G string. I think my amp is cleaner. Yes. Uh, if you like it better, if not, I can make it dirtier. Up to you. It's definitely not better. That's that's why I, I have to be honest with you. It's it doesn't sound better. Like it's oh, it's a completely different thing. It's yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed. Though. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. 
taste, but it's yeah. not. Uh, yeah. Wow. It's, uh, well, it's my a, mom wouldn't hear, any hear the difference. Yeah, yeah. There. No, for me, it was just the point that uh, sometimes people go and, and yeah. say, yeah. you know, this is what, what, yeah. whatever it is. No, for me, it, yeah. it is just like a tube amp. It is the same feel. It's just blah, blah, blah. If we would spend some time to match it, I've been there, um, but I wanted to see how you feel in a, in a <laughs> I way. I feel good. I yeah. feel the neck pickup yeah, so yeah. well done okay thanks um this was the fireball 25 yes. yeah so we know um yeah some people can't wait to see the album uh, to hear the album of course yeah how far are you at this point? Uh, <laughs> I, the, everything is done, but I just need to um, need to record some uh, uh, solos and two guests. I'm still waiting for two guests, which is you know you, but you of course you, I have to send you the track. Okay, I and don't know anything yet. Yeah, 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 you will, <laughs> you will, and uh, and another person. Surprise, surprise, and then I hope uh, during the summertime, uh, Dennis Ward. Uh, we'll mix it and, and uh, yeah. we'll master it at uh, Hofa Studios in Karlsruhe. Mm -hmm. And then, at some point, end of the year, whatever, we'll see. Release step step. whenever it's oh, yeah. finished. Yeah, yeah. For me, good things need to take time. Absolutely. Yeah. And we learned from COVID that things <laughs> uh, are totally different these days. Yeah, anyhow. definitely, definitely. So, yeah. anyway. Well, yeah. Hey, I think we spent over two hours, really? whatever, it's kind of pizza time now. And three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Okay, that's probably the longest live stream ever. But who cares? I loved it. it yeah, me too. A uh, big, big pleasure, Marco. My friend. Thanks so, for having me. Thanks hey for having me, number one. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Yeah. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for you coming here. Thanks for Neil. Thanks for everything. Is great. See you guys next week on Wednesday again. And I think I have a special episode about fuzzes. The one today was actually planned with Peter Weyer. I had a longer, uh, he couldn't do it, but this is not, it's just postponed. It will take another half a year till I come back and stuff like this. So it's all on the list. We are all friends. We are all good. Um, it, you know, good things take time. Whenever it's the right time, we go for it. Take care, guys. All bye the bye. best. Cheers. <laughs>